Hi, everyone. This is Mallory Flowers on behalf of Jennifer Shoss and Associates. And we are coming to you live from Washington, D.C. And welcome to our webinar Wednesday series. Our webinars are held every Wednesday in 2018 at 12 p.m. and 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And our speakers range from accountants to attorneys and other industry professionals. The full schedule for the rest of the year is on our website underneath the webinar tab. In the interest of time, we do not take questions and our speaker's contact info is posted on the last slide. So if you have any questions, please contact the speaker directly. The recordings are on our website underneath the archived webinar tab, as well as on our YouTube channel. All right, this is just a quick blurb about us. Jennifer Shelton Associates is based in downtown Washington, DC, and we help both product and service companies with federal contracting. Our clients are domestic and foreign, defense contractors and civilian, and our services range from market analysis support to contract vehicles, including the GSA schedule. We can also help you with proposal writing and post award contract administration. More information about our services and upcoming events can be found on our website. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dig into today's presentation, which is types of federal contracts. And Ali Paskin is our speaker today. You can learn more about her background on this slide. Thank you, Ali, for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that wonderful introduction, and I'm certainly glad to be here. We can move on to the next slide and get started. This is just to give you an idea of the amount of money and opportunity there is available doing contracts with the federal government. It is quite lucrative, as you can see in 2017, the government spent $3.98 trillion, and the fiscal year 2019 budget is currently set at $4.4 trillion. So although many RFPs use the terms price and cost interchangeably, there is a stated definition in FAR 15.401 that makes the distinction quite clear. FAR defines price as cost plus any fee or profit applicable to the contract type. These contract types are grouped into two broad categories, fixed price contracts and cost reimbursement contracts. The definition for price and cost applies. Despite the two broad category classification noted by FAR, contract types in the FAR are actually divided into five categories, fixed price contracts, cost reimbursement contracts, incentive contracts, indefinite delivery contracts and time and materials, labor hour contracts. There is, however, some combining of those types as we'll discuss as we go on. Next slide. Fixed price contracts. Fixed price types of contracts provide for a firm price or, in appropriate cases, an adjustable price. Fixed price contracts provide for an adjustable price that may include a ceiling price, a target price, including target cost, or both. Unless otherwise specified in the contract, the ceiling price or target price is subject to adjustment or the revision of the contract price under stated circumstances. The contracting officer shall use firm fixed price or fixed price with economic price adjustment contracts when acquiring commercial items. A firm fixed price contract provides for a price that is not subject to any adjustment on the basis of the contractor's cost experience in performing the contract. This contracting type places upon the contractor maximum risk and full responsibility for all costs and resulting profit or loss. It provides maximum incentive for the contractor to control costs and perform effectively and imposes a minimum administrative burden upon the contracting parties. Next slide, please. Firm fixed price. The contractor is required to devote a specified level of effort over a stated period of time for a fixed dollar amount usually found in the contracts for investigation or study is a specific research or development area. Firm fixed price materials reimbursement type contracts are used in purchase of repair and overhaul services to provide a firm fixed price for services with reimbursement for cost of materials used. A fixed price contract with economic price adjustment 
is used as appropriate to protect both the government and the contractor when there is serious doubt about the stability of labor or material prices during the life of the contract. Price adjustment provisions can provide for both upward and downward adjustments. There are several types designed to facilitate proper pricing under varying conditions. It provides for a firm price or under appropriate circumstances may provide for an adjustable price. At Frick's price incentive contract, uh, determina redetermination uh, if provides for a firm fixed price for an initial period of contract performance and for prospective redetermination upward or downward at stated times during the performance of the contract. If retroactive, it provides for a ceiling price and retroactive price redetermination after completion of the contract. Next slide, please. Cost reimbursement contracts provide for payment of allowable incurred costs to the extent prescribed in the contract. These contracts establish an estimate of total cost for the purpose of obligating funds and establishing a ceiling that the contractor may not exceed except at the contractor's risk without the approval of the contracting officer. These contracts are suitable for use only when uncertainties involved in contract performance do not permit costs to be estimated with sufficient accuracy to use any of the types of fixed price contracts. These contracts should be used only when circumstances do not allow the agency to define its requirements sufficiently to allow for a fixed price type contract according to the FAR. That is, uncertainties involved in contract performance do not permit costs to be estimated with sufficient accuracy. Next slide, please. There are also different types of cost reimbursement contracts. A cost plus fixed free contract, for example, uh, the contractor's cost responsibility is minimized and the government's cost responsibility is maximized. The contractor is reimbursed for allowable, allocable costs. Contractor's price profit is fixed. The price of the contract, total amount paid to the contractor, is not fixed. A cost plus award fee contract, or CPAF, is a cost reimbursement type contract with special fee provisions. It provides a means of applying incentives and contracts that are not susceptible to finite measurements of performance necessary for structuring incentive contracts. The fee is in two parts, a fixed amount unrelated to performance and an award amount related to a subjective judgment of the quality of the contractor's performance. Next slide, please. Incentive contracts are appropriate to use when a firm fixed price contract is not appropriate and the required supplies or services can be acquired at lower costs and in certain circumstances with improved delivery or technical performance by relating the amount of profit or fee payable under the contract to the contractor's performance. Incentive contracts are designed to obtain specific acquisition objectives by establishing reasonable and attainable targets that are clearly communicated to the contractor and include appropriate incentive arrangements designed to motivate contractor efforts that might not otherwise be emphasized and discourage contractor inefficiency and waste. Basically, they're dangling the carrot in front of the contractor to ensure that they get the best bang for the buck. Cost plus incentive fee CPIF contracts uh, come with a provision for a fee that is adjusted by a formula in accordance with the relationship which total allowable costs bear to the target cost. Next slide, please. There are three major types of incentives. Cost incentives, basically staying within your budget. Performance incentives, meeting all your requirements and meeting them in a quality fashion. And delivery incentives, 
meeting your milestones, and delivering what is required in the contract when it is required. Incentives are combined with either of the two major contract types to become fixed-price incentive contracts or cost reimbursement incentive contracts. For incentives with fixed fee contracts, there are three major types. Fixed price incentive or a firm target, fixed price incentive with a successive target, fixed price contract with award fee. Uh, for incentives with cost reimbursement contracts, there are two major types, cost plus incentive fee and cost plus award fee. Next slide, please. Time and materials, or TNM contracts, are a sort of hybrid that combine aspects of fixed price and cost reimbursement contracts. These are the contracts that present the highest risk to the government and the lowest risk to the contractor. That's why to the government, they're the least desirable contract type to use. These contracts provide for acquiring supplies or services on the basis of direct labor hours at a specified fixed hourly rate that includes wages, overhead, general administrative or GNA expenses, and profit, the actual cost for materials used. The TNM contract may be used only when it is not possible to accurately estimate the extent or duration of the work or to anticipate costs with any reasonable degree of confidence. The agencies that typically use this contract type include DISA, the Federal Transit Administration, or FTA, and the DOD. Or just as a little tidbit, a sidebar of information, but since DISA began using TNM contracts in 91, the agency has awarded 18 contracts with TNM provisions with an estimated total value of $1.18 billion, approximately 45% of the estimated value of all DISA contract awards. The labor hour contract is a type of TNM contract that excludes materials supplied by the contractor. Next slide, please. Sometimes the government can realize economies of scale by centralizing the purchase of certain types of products or services. The Government-Wide Acquisition Contract, or GWAC, consolidates this purchasing across a number of federal government agencies thereby encouraging long-term vendor agreements with fewer vendors. The advantage of using a GWAC for the government is that the agency signs the contract and centralizes the contract administration for all the participating agencies. One agency might hold the GWAC, but several other agencies may actually be able to put work on that contract, but the agency that holds the contract handles all the contract administration. This makes it faster, less costly, and more convenient than having each contracting organization issue its own contract. Uh, generally, there are three agencies that use uh, GWAC, uh, GSA, uh, the National Institutes of Health, and NASA. GWACs are multiple award, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, or IDIQ contracts that help agencies meet their technology requirements through a customizable solutions-based approach. The advantages for federal agencies to use GWACs include the speed and cost because GWACs save time and money. They are already fully competed and projects become task orders issued against an existing GWAC contract. Procurement lead time is drastically reduced compared to conventional contracting methods. It provides for flexibility. Agencies can issue GWAC orders using their own staff or use the USGSA Assisted Acquisition Services Division to place orders on their behalf. There's a wide range of contract types GWACs provide a full range of contract types, including fixed price, 
cost reimbursement, time and material, and labor hour. GWAX may be used for solutions needed anywhere in the world so they can provide worldwide geographic coverage. GWAX also provides access to a premier industry partner pool that has already undergone a stringent selection process. Small business GWAX can provide agencies with access to qualified small businesses and associated socioeconomic credit. And finally, it's limited protestability. Protests are not allowed on task orders under $10 million, except on the grounds that the order increases the scope, period of performance, or maximum value of the GWAG. Next slide, please. An indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, or IDIQ contract provides for an indefinite, indefinite quantity with stated limits of supplies or services during a fixed period. This type of contract must require the government to order and the contractor to furnish at least a stated minimum quantity of supplies or services. The contracting officer establishes a reasonable maximum quantity for the contract in total. Other IDIQs are sometimes known as task order contracts, and some can be actually GWACs. The government uses this type of contract when it cannot predetermine above a specified minimum the precise quantities of supplies or services it will require during the contract period. The IDIQ contract is most often used for service contracts and architect engineering services. Awards are usually for base years as well as option years. The government places delivery orders for supplies and task orders for services against a basic contract for individual requirements. Minimum and maximum quantity limits are specified in the basic contract as either number of units for supplies or dollar values for services. The contract allows for a certain amount of contract process streamlining as negotiations can be made only with the selected company and such contracts are exempt from protest. Next slide, please. The task order. Vendors provide a schedule of rates, job categories, and labor rates when entering into a multiple award task order contract. When the government wants specific services performed, the contracting officer issues a request for response to a task order. The vendors must offer those services at the same or lesser rate than what is specified in the original IDIQ or GWAC contract. Task orders without the competitive element are used for single award IDIQ contracts. Similar contracts for supplies are called delivery orders. Task orders can be placed using any contractually specified medium and need to clearly describe all services to be formed so the full cost and price for the performance of the work can be established when the order is placed. Orders have to be within the scope, issued within the period of performance, and be within the maximum value of the original contract. Performance-based acquisition methods are preferred by the government except in cases of information technology and related services in which modular contracting is preferred. Next slide, please. In most services, uh, in most circumstances, government agencies are required to allow full and open competition for contracts. Government agencies may not choose to disallow full and open competition because of a lack of advanced planning or concerns about funding. When not providing for full and open competition, contracting officers must still solicit offers from as many potential sources as possible. However, in certain situations, agencies may decide to use what is referred to as other than full or open competition to award a contract. And these types of contracts 
are known as sole source or no bid contracts. A sole source item is one with only a single supplier. It implies that there is only one person or one company that can provide the contractual services needed and any attempt to obtain bids would only result in one person or company being available to meet the need. It is awarded usually, but not always, by a government group after soliciting and negotiating with only one firm. Sole source contracts typically are used in circumstances where the compatibility of equipment, components, accessories, computer software, replacement parts or service is the paramount consideration where the sole supplier's item is needed for trial use or testing, where the purchase of mass-produced movie or video films or written publications distributed or sold primarily by the publisher are needed, or where the purchase of property for which it is determined there is no functional equivalent is needed. Next slide, please. Understanding the various types of contracts helps you determine how to price the bid and can even affect your bid-no-bid no bid decision. As we say, a firm fixed price, for example, is in the customer's favor and has a higher risk for the contractor, where a cost-plus contract is the opposite. It's in the contractor's favor and has a higher risk for the customer. So if you are a small business, for example, you might not be wanting to risk bidding a firm fixed price and be more inclined to look for opportunities to bid cost plus contracts to lower your risk. So thank you very much. And I will turn it back over to Mallory. Thank you so much, Ali. Uh, that was a lot of great information. If you have any questions, please uh, contact her. At 1230, we are covering key concepts in federal contracting. So please join us then. Thank you, everybody.